Villainous by It's Underslash Kingston on AO3. Episode 3, Chapter 4, Records. 10.30, no leads, no information. Ochako popped back onto the bench behind her. Almost two hours of searching. The sleepless night was starting to catch up to her. She walked past more alleys than she thought existed, but found no one who would say anything about the league. If they had so much reach, why couldn't anyone find them? They are bound to have slipped up at least once, right? They made enemies out of other villains before. People willing to betray them. Right? Ochako had eventually looped all the way around, ending up back in the park she originally found. And that's where she was now. She still couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching her, though. But now it was more than just a gut feeling. She heard their footsteps, counted the seconds of silence between their movements, saw their shadows racing across open streets. Well, at least they weren't attacking her. Maybe they'd keep her company on the graveyard shifts she'd be pulling for UA. This was already affecting her. She couldn't make a friend out of a potential threat to UA. Speaking of the hero school, how did they expect her to keep up with this and classes? If she spent all night searching for villains and all day doing classes about searching for villains, when would she get sleep? She yawned just thinking about the sleep she was missing. Deciding that it was late enough for tonight, Ochako stood up and began the grueling 10-minute walk back to UA. She arrived outside the large stone gates just after 10.40. The mystery pair of eyes still trained on her as she used her quirk to get over the fence. Touching her hands back together, she dropped down to the other side, landing with a light thump. Now the hard part, she whispered to herself, eyeing her window. It wasn't notably high, and there was an old oak tree that stood proudly beside her small balcony. It was easy to get up in theory, but if you factored in all the circumstances, it got a little tricky. First of all, there were many guards around the dorm building. If they saw her, they were certainly going to do their jobs and stop a shady figure on the school grounds. Secondly, Jiro's dorm was just a few doors from hers. If she made any strange sounds on the outside of her the room, her noise-sensitive friend might investigate. Third, it was dark. Apparently no one needed to see at the school during the night. This might be a little difficult. Ochako waited patiently around the corner of the dorm building, stating statue still until the guard turned around and went the other way. She ran to the bottom of the tree and levitated herself to the balcony with her quirk, careful not to hit the tree or its many branches. Ochako landed silently and slid the glass door open just enough to slide her body through. Once inside, she strained to listen for any noises. If someone was coming, she'd just pretend she wanted fresh air. It would be more suspicious to dive into bed and fake sleep. No footsteps, no guards, no problem. She officially got an out and back into UA undetected. That really put in perspective how easily it would be for villains to get into the school. She didn't even prepare for this, just waited. Jeez, maybe the first important thing she'd tell Mr. Aizawa is to get better security. She hoped the fence, and she was home free. As Ochako began to slid the door shut, she paused, still aware of her mystery stalker's presence. She looked around the outside of the fence. Like the entire night, she wasn't able to see them. Maybe it was the adrenaline coursing through her, or the sleep deprivation taking its toll. But Ochako stepped out onto the balcony again. She took one last look around, then decided to take a bow. She stood up smiling. She broke into the school she was supposed to be in, and her teachers knew she was breaking in. But it still felt cool. In that weird way, I shouldn't have done that, of course. Are you supposed to be here, little hero? And from the comfort of the branches of a small tree outside Yue's fence, the stranger watched Ochako float onto Yue's property. Wouldn't they open the gates for you? They stood up, skillfully climbing higher into the tree. They watch Ochako stand flush against the wall, waiting for the guards to leave. But the guard drew closer to her. They're gonna find you, little hero. They jumped down from the tree, landing silently on their feet. 
selecting a small rock from the sidewalk. The stranger launched it over the fence. It landed near the edge, creating a quiet crack. But the noise was splitting in the silence. There you go. All better. The stranger dusted their hands off and returned to the tree. When they sat down, they glimpsed the girl dart back into the room. The door began to slid close, only to open again. The girl stepped out and looked around, scanning the area for something. Are you looking for me? Then the girl took a bow. She stood up confidently and went back inside. A light-hearted chuckle came from the tree. I like you, little hero. A pause. Maybe I'll tell the League about you soon. Beep, 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 beep. No. Ochako grumbled as she hit the alarm clock, stopping its obnoxious beeping. It was already 5.30 a.m. Although she had gotten back around 11 p.m., Ochako had a lot on her mind, from her goal to her mystery stalker, and wasn't able to fall asleep until way past midnight. This left her with T-minus five hours of sleep, as opposed to her normal eight to ten. She rolled out of bed and went to shower in her room's bathroom. UA had really upgraded the dorm since the student had moved in the first time. They made sure each student had their own bedroom and bathroom, along with a main living room and kitchen to share. Once out of the shower, Ochako dried her hair and got dressed. She smiled tiredly in the mirror. Staying out at night was seriously messing up her schedule, and she'd only been doing it for one night. How long am I supposed to pull this up? She asked her reflection before sighing. She shook her head, reminding herself of her mission and how it would help everyone. Ochako gripped the side of the sink tightly and met her own eyes in the mirror. I'm gonna stop the League of Villains. I'm gonna find them and defeat them from the inside. I'm gonna be a villain. Wait, no, I'm gonna be a fake villain. With one last confident look in the mirror, Ochako set off for her first class of the morning. Good morning, Ochako. Deku waved happily from his seat. The morning sun reflected off his green eyes, making them shine brightly. Ochako smiled, feeling a light brush crawl up her neck. She had a crush on the green-haired boy since they met at the school gates. Ochako found his quiet murmuring endearing, and his looks of concentration to be sweet. Um, are you alright? You're staring. Deku chuckled, rubbing the back of his neck awkwardly. Oh, sorry, Deku. Ochako forced a laugh, hoping it didn't sound that way. I got cut up in my own head. I didn't sleep well last night. None of that was a lie. It just wasn't the whole truth. That's not good. Is something troubling you? He gestured to the empty chair beside his, silently asking the gravity hero if she wanted to talk about it. Well, it was kind of him to offer. Ochako couldn't tell him anything. Then again, would it be more suspicious to decline? It's nothing to worry about. I was just up late night studying. Ochako still took the seat beside him, smiling warmly. Deku's worry seemed to fully fade, and he returned the bright smile. It's time already. It's time already? Okay. Field trip. We have one soon. Remember to wake up early. Or don't. Aizawa began from behind his desk. The bell rang as he stood up and ditched the old yellow sleeping bag on the floor. If you don't come, it's one less student for me to watch. Anyways, it's Tuesday. Training day. Go pair up and spar. He gestured vaguely to the class, who began chattering quietly. Deku looked excitedly at Bakugo, who didn't acknowledge the green-haired boy's existence. Just go ask him, Ochako said, giving Deku a reassuring nudge. Deku nodded firmly and stood up, making his way to the blonde boy's table. Ochako watched as Bakugo said something, probably threatening, before the pair left the classroom. Hey, Ochako, a cracky voice asked from beside her, causing the gravity hero to jump. A small chuckle came in return as Ochako spun around to see who it was. Sue stood there, adjusting her goggles over her eyes. Hey, Sue. Did you want to partner up? Ochako asked, standing up from her seat. The frog-like girl smiled and nodded in confirmation. 
Let's go then. The pair began to make their way out of the slowly emptying classroom. Ida had left with Todoroki, causing some students to linger without the nagging of their class representative. Uraraka, wait a moment. Mr. Aizawa said from behind his desk. He paged through a few pages before selecting one and reading off of it. They need to talk to you about the measurements for your suit, as well as a few details. It seemed important, so I agreed to allow you to leave during class time. He filled it before handing her a folded paper. Sue gave a questioning kudo before looking to Ochako. Oh, I forgot to tell them about the specifics of the extra padding. I don't think it'll take very long. The gravity hero exclaimed. Sue nodded. I'll go find another partner then. Ochako hadn't sent in any suit improvements, so why did they need to talk to her? She guessed that might be a cover so she could meet with the pros about her mission. She walked out into the empty hallways. She unfolded the paper and was met with a room number in time. 202, 7.30 a.m. The 200s were located on the upper floors, where the teacher's lounge and break room was. She was supposed to go there, and at 7.30, Ochako checked her phone for the time. 7.24. Oh, jeez. She silently wondered why Mr. Aizawa didn't give her the paper sooner. She had to act completely normal as she raced through the halls and ran to the elevator. Only once did she pass another student. As she ran past, Ochako mumbled something about being late for class. An incredibly intelligent play, in her opinion. Once she stepped into the elevator, she hit the 200 button, causing the little number to light up and the doors to close. She checked the time again as she waited for the metal machine to lift her to her destination. 7.27. Three minutes to get there. The elevator opened, and luckily, no one was outside of it. That made sense. The floor was only really for the teachers during the lunch break and downtime. Ochako came to a stop outside of room 203. At 7.29, she leaned against the wall to catch her breath after realizing she had made it on time. Why wouldn't he have given it to me so late? She mumbled as her phone clock struck 7.30. The sword beside her opened, revealing midnight. Hello, the tall woman greeted, swinging the door open and looking both ways before letting Ochako in. Anyone follow you? No, Ochako replied, entering the well-lit room. Good. Hawks chimed in from his seat, smiling as he cracked the top of a soda can open. He took a sip and offered an unopened one to Ochako, who politely declined. Instead, she decided to ask the important questions. Why exactly am I here? And should I be missing a sparring session for this? I should probably get all my training in during the day. It'll come in handy when I have to fight. The gravity hero said, taking his seat at the table, once midnight gesture for her to do so. You're here because we decided to pull records and further brief you on your mission. If you so choose, you can go back to your class now. Midnight exclaimed, pulling out a thick stack of files. So... Ochako looked at the pile. The outside of the vanilla folders were all labeled High Clearance Private Information. She nodded, looking back at Midnight. Now listen, it sounds important. I am cutting it off there. Yes, I cut off chapters on certain points. That's why I have episodes and then chapter. So it's why it's episode blank, chapter is blank, you know? So um, next time you're going to join me for episode three, chapter four. Uh, no, episode four, chapter four. Oops, that I did that. Now we're going to be back in track. I love that. Okay, because I realized that this, I've never had it where the, where the episode is smaller in number than the chapter. It's almost always the episodes are longer or uh, more than the chapters that there is. So uh, I'm cutting it in half because my voice hurts. My voice hurts. It hurts. So I don't have to explain myself to you guys. I'm, plus, if I cut it in halves and stuff like that, you guys get more videos of this. Uh, you also get more cliffhangers because I love giving you cliffhangers. I hope you know, sometimes I choose specific moments where it's like, you know what? There. I'm cutting it off there. I mean, technically speaking, yeah, sure, you guys could, you know, go ahead and open up the link in the description where the fanfiction currently resides and read it yourselves. Uh, but I know some of you won't, so have fun being cliffhanged. So, hi, Echo Bro. 
You want to talk? Blah, blah. Wonderful, intelligent, such a scholar. That's really, that's easy. What Pouring quick... river water in your stock. Okay, what, where does... Come closer so they can hear you. Okay. It's quick, it's free, and it's easy. Pouring river water in your socks. You know what's quick, free, and easy? Getting the fuck out of my room. I know, just what I'm doing. Good. As I was saying, I'm really excited to do this. I, have I mentioned that? Have I mentioned that I'm excited? I think I have mentioned it enough. I am so happy. I really hope this gets the love that it deserves. If it does not, I'm... If you're not giving it the love it deserves, I hope you know. I will be at your door. Sleep with one eye open. Okay, no, but in all seriousness, I really hope that this, you know, you know, um, gets as much love as all my other videos. Uh, if not more, because, like, they deserve it. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. They're being gay. Look at them. Look at them looking at each other. Look at them blushing. Look at them... Look... That fucking photo, that fucking drawing took me longer than it should have to draw. Appreciate it. Look at the drawing. I didn't even give it my watermarks. I forgot to give it my watermarks. So, please don't steal my drawing. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Please don't steal it. Thank you. Because, <laughs> um, I realized that it doesn't have any of my watermarks. So you, you very much can just, you know, steal it. So, don't. I'd appreciate it if you didn't. But, um, yeah, please don't. I- What uh, the fuck are you do- you- oh my god, okay. Sorry, Echo Brother scared the fucking living shits out of me because I turn and I just see his eye peeking from behind the fucking cat tree and that shit- That shit is straight up nightmares. Is this what's gonna happen to Uraraka? Is she just gonna, out of nowhere- Shut the fuck up! Is she just- uh, Shut the fuck up! Is she just out of nowhere gonna turn around and just see Toga peering at her from behind a corner? Oh my god. My heart. Ooh, okay. As always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.